بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأيوب إذ نادى ربه أني مسني الضر وأنت أرحم الراحمين فاستجبنا له فكشفنا ما به من ضر وآتيناه أهله ومثلهم معهم رحمة من عندنا رحمة من عندنا وذكرى للعابدين وإسماعيل وإدريس وذا الكفل كل من الصابرين وأدخلناهم في رحمتنا إنهم من الصالحين وذنون إذ ذهب مغاضبا فظن أن لن نقدر عليه فنادى في الظلمات أن لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين فاستجبنا له ونجيناه من الغم وكذلك ننجي المؤمنين وزكريا إذ نادى ربه رب لا تذرني فردا وأنت خير الوارثين فاستجبنا له ووهبنا له يحيى وأصلحنا له زوجه إنهم كانوا يسارعون في الخيرات إنهم كانوا يسارعون في الخيرات ويدعوننا رغبا ورهبا وكانوا لنا خاشعين جزاك الله اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعليه بارك وسلم عليه before we begin the proceedings of today's session a brief introduction of our moderator today dr ubada hassan is our orthopedic alumnus from our program a graduate of chanka medical college and a person of palestinian jordanian origin uh, a great personality to work with completed residency with us and did his fcbs in orthopedics did his masters in clinical research and was uh, awarded the best resident award and did then did his masters in clinical research went over to usa to did uh, and did a one and a half year fellowship with uh, benjamin miller he is our guest faculty today uh, in orthopedic oncology he is now back in larkana and serving his population there so uh, over to you dr ubada you are the moderator for the day go ahead thank you thank you very much dr masood and i would like to thank all of our eminent speakers for giving us uh, such opportunity and the time all of you are my respected teachers and somewhere examiners as well and uh, some people i worked with so it's our pleasure as uh, residents students as uh, uh, fellows and also those who just started their career we are at the entry uh, level i would like just to uh, share my screen for so uh, just to uh, as an introduction of all of this program which is very very important to us and you can see from the registration we got so far more than 470 registered candidates uh, maybe more and that crossed the limit of, of zoom meeting itself so we will reach that and then we will uh, give them the online streaming link uh, the program will be recorded and that will be as well shared on on the website and uh, with others and candidates or participants they registered from multiple countries majority were from pakistan 
but also from Afghanistan, Yemen, Middle East, Palestine, Jordan, and even Saudi Arabia, UAE, Kuwait, Qatar, UK, and some from India as well. And uh, you can see from the slide also majority, of course, they are the resident and uh, postgraduate students, maybe both can be in one category, they cross 50%. And postgraduate uh, students with uh, second majority are the medical students and uh, some of the, of the uh, new faculty as well, who just started their career. So I will not take uh, so much time. This presentation will be 10 minutes and we will not interrupt your presentations, but you will hear the timer beep at the ninth minute as a soft reminder. So uh, don't stop by that beep, but you, you will be having another minute also. We will try to give more uh, of the time to the discussion and questions answers. Before we started this program, we received tens of questions to be asked. So we, are, we, we were trying to go through all of them from micro questions to mega or my, macro type of topics that we will be asking each and every uh, presenter as well. Question and answer se uh, session will be conducted at the end of each session. We have three. One is for uh, opportunities in Pakistan, second opportunities in the USA, and then followed by the UK and Ireland. So after each session, we'll have some questions from these speakers, and then at the end of the program, if we will have time. So for the audience, send us your questions via the chat column, direct your questions to the speaker, mentioning his name, and we'll try to try, uh, uh, answer all other questions, which we won't be able to answer during the program. Uh, later on from the speakers and also we'll try to publish them at our uh, website. So we, we just start uh, our programs Rahim, with opportunities in Pakistan, the session number one, and uh, that will be about the uh, current fellowship opportunities within uh, POA, the Pakistan Orthopedic Association by our respected Dr. Ulam uh, Mustafa. I will, I will give you the screen and you can uh, start. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Dr. Gulab Ustad. At present, I'm President of Pakistan Orthopedic Association. I will discuss about the opportunities in Pakistan from the platform of Pakistan Orthopedic Association for fellowship programs. Next. This is the Executive Board of Pakistan Orthopedic Association 2019 and 21. Pakistan Orthopedic Association is a profession, national professional organization of orthopedic surgeons, which came into existence in the historical city of Hyderabad in 1964. And these are the founder of our orthopedic association, the legends of orthopedic surgery in Pakistan, teachers of the teachers, Professor Zed Kekazi, Professor Abdul Rahim, and Professor Ali Muhammad Ansari. In 2005 and 6, the subspecialty forums were established for the promotion of subspecialty in Pakistan, madam. And at that time, 11 forums were established, uh, POA Plastic Forum, Deformity Correction and Bone Regeneration Forums, uh, Ankle and Foot Forums, and, and all these forums were established in 2005 and 6 to promote the subspecialties, madam. Then we started, we have subspecialty, uh, subspecialty fellowship programs in 2006. Initially, three centers were recognized and Alhamdulillah now 56 centers are affiliated with POA orthopedic post fellowship programs. And duration of fellowship is one year except in deformity correction and bone reg regeneration, which is for six months. And now we are offering Post fellowship training program in arthroplasty, spine surgery, trauma, pediatric orthopedic surgery, hand surgery, deformity correction and bone regeneration, sports surgery and arthroscopy, and orthopedic oncology. And these are the legends of orthopedic surgery, and they are the supervisors Professor Umar Saab, Professor Shahid Noor, Dr. Sh Professor Shahzad Javed, and Isra Emer. These are the supervisors in arthroplasty, and th these are the centers. Um, of our deformity correction, Dr. As uh, Professor Asadullah Makhdoum, Professor Dr. Shoaib Khan, Dr. Harun Rashid from Aya Khan, and Dr. Ahmed Awad, Nishtar Medical College. These are the centers for deformity corrections. And for hand surgery, the Professor Chima Saab in Balpur and Dr. Khalid Masood, CMH Lahore. These are the centers. Pediatric Orthopedic Surgery, Professor Abdul Latif Sami, 
प्रोफेसर अतीकू जमान डॉक्टर सिकंदर हयात डॉक्टर सालिक काशिफ पिशावर एंड प्रोफेसर दिल आवेज नदीम फ्रॉम मे हॉस्पिटल लाहौर स्पाइन सर्जरी प्रोफेसर आमिर अजीज प्रोफेसर असद कुरेशी साहब इज मैरिज जनरल इन आर्मी सी एम एच पिंडी प्रोफेसर आरिफ खान पिशावर प्रोफेसर अयाज खान पिशावर प्रोफेसर खालिद हुसैन लाहौर डॉक्टर्स हॉस्पिटल प्रोफेसर इम्तियाज हाशमी जयाउद्दीन हॉस्पिटल एंड प्रोफेसर मोहम्मद हनी लाहौर हॉस्पिटल लाहौर जनरल हॉस्पिटल इन ट्रामा प्रोफेसर जकी इदरीस लियाकत यूनिवर्सिटी हॉस्पिटल प्रोफेसर रियाज हिंडी डॉक्टर इकबाल मे हॉस्पिटल एंड प्रोफेसर नईम अहमद भुरकी हॉस्पिटल लाहौर मतलब and in orthopedic oncology dr zishan hyatabad medical complex peshawar and in sports surgery and arthroscopy dr umar bhat eo clinic karachi total we are offering arthroplasty uh, slots total 8 out of these two are paid in spine surgery total 14 slots are available out of 14 two are paid in trauma 8 out of 8 two are paid pediatric orthopedic surgery 10 hand surgery for deformity correction 10 sports and arthroscopic 1 and orthopedic oncology 1 these are the different slots available in different centers total of 50, 56 fellowship slots are available in different sub specialties and because of the financial constraint only 16 of these fellowships are paid while the rest are unpaid money funding of fellowships are from the saving of orthocon which is held every year mother as per constitution and bylaws a fixed share has been declared for pua fellowship program whatever we earn from orthocon a fixed amount is spared for fellowship program and the rest is distributed among the orthocon organizers for their needs of different uh, uh, requirement and the rest is uh, 50% is going to pua for is requirement and these are the expenses number of fellows per year each sub specialty is two stipend for one fellow who is from the same city per month is 50000 a stipend for one fellow who is from another city is 70000 and a stipend for one fellow who is from the same city per year is 6 lakhs and from other city it is of 8 lakhs and 40000 and you can see in 2018 there was 10 paid fellows and we spent uh, 2.9 million rupees matlab then in 2019 there were 11 paid fellows and we spent 3.13 million and 2009 uh, 20 it, uh, total uh, paid were 14 and uh, uh, the amount was 3.245 million rupees per annum matlab and this is a huge amount because arthropa pua has got no fund uh, except arthrocon so this is a big amount which we has spent on these fellowship programs matlab mm -hmm. from arthropedic point of view executive board tries to create international training opportunities for the fellows who are undergoing training in the pua fellowship program in pakistan matlab mm -hmm. in 2019 next in 2019 with the help of our overseas uh, Uh, dr manavar shah and dr amir shah two fellows were sent in sports and orthopedic surgery in uk and fellowship was partially funded by pua and rest was sponsored by them pua recognized their efforts and are grateful and pua had also collaboration with two international organizations korean orthopedic association and turkish orthopedic association korean and turkish orthopedic association provided an opportunity for traveling fellowship for two of our members but due to pandemic program that was cancelled last year two of our fellows were selected for korean and two for uh, turkish but unfortunately because of the fellowship uh, covid uh, that program was cancelled pua also published a journal uh, known as the jpua and this is the, from orthopedic point of view from pakistan point of view it is recognized in uh, hsc in wide category and uh, also recognized in googles and uh, pakistan uh, medical commissions uh, and different uh, websites is available on this web uh, citation rate is 24 7.36 per author it is it provides open and free access to all visitors for viewing all full text articles published at free of cost other these are the websites for submission this is the website 
Now, our strength or objective of PUA with the ever growing membership of PUA currently more than 1500 members and 600 students are members. Mother. We represent a very large group unified on common grounds for the benefit of association by promoting education and training. Our commitment to improve quality of training for our members has enabled us to progress through the realms, realms of time and continuous improvement. We also aim to advance the culture of education and research in all possible ways and to encourage highest standard of practice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Too. And now with, uh, with the second, thank you for the time as well. Uh, we have Dr. Shahid uh, Shafi with us, and uh, his topic will be the surgeons managing hospitals. So Shahid is a CEO, and he will tell us if, uh, if it is possible that everybody can become a CEO. Dr. Shafi. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hassan, and thank you very much, uh, Masood, for inviting me to speak today. The simple uh, answer to your, the title of my talk is yes, absolutely yes. Uh, the, the longer answer is what I'm going to share with you over the next, uh, next 10 minutes or so. Uh, I thought the best way to approach uh, this question would be to just share my own journey with you uh, and uh, then uh, see what lessons can be learned from it, and I'm, I will share some of those lessons with you. So my own journey started uh, at AKU as a medical student in 1983. After graduating from here in 1988, I went over uh, to the US. Uh, the first few years I spent, I, I actually spent in public health. Uh, I worked with USAID and then eventually obtained a master's in public health uh, from uh, the Johns Hopkins University. Uh, however, all along I knew I wanted to be a surgeon. Uh, so I was eventually able to find a surgical residency in uh, New Jersey Medical School, which I finished in 1998. Uh, subsequently, I came back uh, to Pakistan and worked at AKU uh, for about three years as a general surgeon. Uh, and then I returned to the U.S. in 2001 to pursue a fellowship in trauma surgery and surgical critical care from the University of Pennsylvania. After finishing my fellowship, uh, we moved to Dallas, Texas, and joined uh, UT Southwestern uh, as a faculty member in the Department of Surgery. And I worked as a trauma surgeon uh, at the famous Sparkland Hospital in Dallas, which is a big, busy trauma center. Uh, my first major uh, uh, administrative or management responsibility was at Parkland Hospital in 2007, which would be about 20 years after graduating from medical school. Uh, when I was appointed as the medical director for the trauma surgery service line. It was a large, busy service line with about 5,000 patients a year. Uh, we had uh, 11 surgeons uh, on the service, about 50 nurses, and then, of course, a whole host of subspecialty surgeons and specialists like orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons, anesthesiologists, emergency room physicians. So it was a large complex operation and that is where I first uh, started learning some of the management skills uh, that subsequently you know, proved to be my passion. Uh, in 2009, after doing that for about three years, I had an opportunity to join another healthcare system uh, in uh, their office of uh, quality. Uh, this was a large healthcare system in Dallas. It's called Baylor Scott and White Health, which eventually had about 45 hospitals. Uh, I worked with the chief uh, quality officer of the health system uh, to, and we worked on improving the quality of surgical care throughout the system. Uh, this is when we were working on uh, measuring risk adjusted outcomes uh, of various surgical procedures. We were also measuring compliance with evidence-based guidelines and measuring the relationship uh, between volume of surgical procedures, different specific surgical procedure and their outcomes at different locations. Uh, as I was doing all that work, uh, I was uh, offered an opportunity to attend a course uh, which was designed uh, for young physicians uh, for, for a physician leadership development program at Baylor Scott & White. Uh, this was a joint program between the health system and a local business school called Southern Methodist University. Uh, this was a two-year program in which uh, the select group of physicians, and we were about 45 of us, uh, we would spend about two days uh, uh, every, few, every other month uh, at the business school, 
And there we got to learn about some of the things that we never learn as a physician during our medical school residency or fellowship. Uh, these are the things uh, such as uh, some how to read financial statements, how to negotiate, uh, learning about your own leadership skill, learning about strategy, management, operations, business, finance, accounting, some other aspects. Uh, I was fascinated by it uh, and I really enjoyed it. So in 2014, uh, I took a conscious decision uh, that I will dedicate the second half of my career to healthcare management. Uh, and I realized that I did not have all the skills that were needed uh, to be a really, uh, to have a really successful career in management. Uh, so I again took a decision to go back to school uh, and obtain a master's in business administration. So at the age of 50, I went back to school. I was the oldest student in the classroom uh, in a very competitive business school, but, uh, and I spent uh, about two years to get my MBA. Uh, and the other uh, decision that I took at that time was that uh, it was not possible to really learn and spend that time in school while having a full-fledged uh, surgical practice. So I cut my practice in half, uh, which essentially mean, meant uh, taking a 50% pay cut uh, to go back to school to learn these new skills. Uh, but I did that because I really wanted to learn these skills and I was passionate about it. I finished my MBA in 2017. And after that, I was, uh, I, I found, uh, I, I was recruited as a chief medical officer for a statewide health system uh, in the state of Arkansas. Uh, in this system, there were about 45 hospitals and about uh, 60 different uh, physician practices all across the state. Uh, and uh, we managed, uh, you know, dealt with all kinds of issues, uh, all kinds of issues related to physician engagement, quality improvement, cost containment, uh, value-based uh, contracting, as well as uh, implementing evidence-based guidelines. And uh, eventually, uh, that path uh, led, uh, led me to, to come back to Pakistan after nearly th 30 years as the CEO of uh, Arkhan Hospital. So that was my career uh, over a period of 32 years. So from the time I graduated in, uh, from AKU as a, as, a, as a doctor in 1988 to becoming the CEO of the same, uh, same institution in uh, 2020. Uh, so what did I learn? Uh, what I learned uh, is that uh, if number one, you need to be very, very clear about your, your, what is it that you're interested in? What is it that you enjoy? What is it that you're passionate about? Because that's the only way to achieve excellence. That is the only way that you can motivate yourself and really learn and give, uh, give the task your 100%. The second thing I learned is that uh, any, any person can achieve anything that they set their minds to, provided they're willing to spend time, effort, money, blood, sweat, and tears. So all learning is intentional. You cannot just become a CEO just because you want to, or just because you have held one or two administrative positions. There are important skills that you need as, as a CEO. What are these skills? These are, this, the, these are the skills uh, around, for example, how to manage people, how to manage your human capital, uh, skills around leadership and strategy, skills of, uh, being able to learn how to prepare a budget, how to manage a budget, how to read financial statements, how to be financially and fiscally responsible uh, and know how to generate revenues and contain your costs. You also have to be aware of the larger environment around you, which is, which is economic environment that you operate in, the political environment that you operate, operate in, as well as the law of the land where you're operating. So that's another skill that you have to learn. And of course, you also need to know uh, the uh, stay true to your to your uh, to your core principles of providing a highest quality patient care at all times. That's what that's what we that's why we went into this career of medicine. So never ever forget whichever position you are in, why you are doing what you are doing. And my goal as a CEO remains to provide the highest quality care to all the patient at all times. So I'm going to stop there and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for yes. your uh, talk and the time management as well.
And uh, we will keep the questions as we discussed to the end of the uh, session and the discussion. I already received uh, multiple questions and I will be asking these from you. I'll, I'll just give the uh, screen to Dr. General Sohail Hafiz and he will let us know about the opportunities within the uh, College of Physicians and Surgeons Pakistan, the CPSP, during and after the uh, residency. Mike, with you, sir. I'm going to talk about, um, if, if you look at the caption, it says FCPS Orthopedics and Beyond. First of all, um, thank you very much, Masood, for inviting me to speak. There are no financial claims uh, on this presentation. Number two, uh, all my appointments with CPSP are honorary. And uh, all the uh, information that I'm going to share now is up to date. But uh, it is, uh, as per my uh, information, it may not uh, be the official uh, viewpoint of the CPSP, but most of it is. Well, I uh, retired from military th after 34 years of service, and now presently I'm working as head of department uh, of orthopedic at Shifa International Hospital, Slamba. But for uh, your interest, uh, I have been the supervisor and examiner since 1998, so I have some experience in the examination system. I remained as counselor of CPSP and then as secretary, and now presently I'm holding the office of Dean of uh, Faculty of Orthopedics at CSP, CPSP. An important uh, appointment that I'm also holding is uh, the chairman of the discipline committee of CPSP since 2017. So I'll be referring to some issues uh, which may crop up during the training with, with my colleagues. All this presentation is mainly geared up for uh, the residents uh, who are under training in orthopedics. Slide please. If you, if you look at it from a resident point of view, all they are keen to do is to pass the exam at the end of the uh, three years or five year training program. But from our point of view, we want to groom a, a gentleman to become a good and reliable orthopedic surgeon, a surgeon in whom you can trust your own body, in which you, whom you can trust that, if, God forbid, if you have an orthopedic problem, you can easily hand over your own body to that particular patient, uh, to that particular surgeon. So uh, what does make a good uh, orthopedic surgeon? Knowledge and skills, of course, are there. But to my mind, one has to be a good manager, must have a right attitude, and must be practicing his uh, skills in an ethical manner. In this presentation, um, uh, I would be covering the first two knowledge and skills, uh, how they are acquired during the training program, and how we uh, can polish them. Next one. Okay, so I'm going to talk uh, on this uh, four uh, subjects during my presentation, the training examination system, what are the opportunities available after the fellowship and what are the subspecialty options within the CPSP. Uh, anybody who starts the orthopedic uh, training must read this uh, uh, curriculum, which has been uh, updated uh, recently, 2021, depending upon your year of induction uh, a particular orthopedic curriculum would be uh, applicable to you. I would strongly recommend that all the residents must go through it because most of the information that you are seeking is very much there in this curriculum. So of course, this is needless to say that you have to undergo a training in a recognized center under a recognized supervisor. It's a three years post intermediate program training program. We are working, the Faculty of Orthopedics is working to change this uh, to a four years program we are in discussion with the college council how to go about it. So it may remain a five years program or we may increase the FCPS uh, training program to uh, five, uh, six years. That is uh, two plus four, or it may remain uh, one plus four. The last year of your training in um, orthopedics, uh, that is the third year of training after the two years of IMM would, is now dedicated for three months rotation in subspecialities of spine, hand, arthroplasty, and pediatric orthopedics. I've, I've seen many students that to uh, sit for the examination, they actually go in and read a lot of text. Of course, it is important for you to know the knowledge, you should have the necessary knowledge. But what I've observed is that the students usually fail in their basics. It's not the high-tech syndromes that the examiners are looking for. They're looking for your basics, clinical skills, like an examination, like basic examination skills. Uh, so I would strongly recommend while the, the students who have just started their training days must spend some time, rather every day they see a patient, they must see 
a patient as if they are seeing it as a long case or a short case. Okay. So you must pick up a textbook, uh, which you should be able to revise. You must also have an access to journals, latest uh, information. I cannot recommend a single textbook. I would suggest that some of the elective orthopedics has to be read from a particular text. Some of the orthopedics has to be read from it, uh, from another textbook. So make up your own uh, notes, but be mindful that at the end of your three years training, you must pick up uh, your knowledge in such a, you must gather your knowledge in a way that you are able to revise it. Uh, I, we have seen uh, students taking six months off uh, uh, just before their exam, sitting um, and uh, trying to revise, which is not probably the right thing to do. I would suggest that you go on reading it while you are under training. This was the knowledge. As far as the skills are concerned, the uh, curriculum actually shows you all the skills which you need to acquire. The level of uh, interaction and uh, the number of surgical procedures that you are supposed to observe, assist, operate under supervision or independently are clearly marked within the SVCD charts, which is part of the curriculum. I would say that as all of us were trained, you have to have a good supervisor who is going to teach you all these skills. Don't try to learn from your mistakes. Uh, I would strongly recommend that all the students must operate under supervision. In many uh, hospitals of the country, uh, we have observed that uh, the students uh, are given, the residents uh, try to operate in odd hours independently and commit mistakes. And then, of course, they, they, they have problems. Uh, I would strongly recommend choose a good supervisor and work under its supervisions. For the procedures which are not done in your centers, for example, in far flung areas, kindly look at your SVCD chart. And if you can, have not acquired a particular skill, please go to a different center, ask your supervisor to arrange a rotation to that uh, other center where those procedures are being done. Now, there's essential uh, CPSP workshops. Uh, one of them is a primary skill uh, surgical workshop. Uh, the orthopedic faculty, what it has done is now uh, uh, formulated a basic orthopedic skill workshop, which would now form the third day of the primary surgical skill workshop. So all the orthopedic residents would have to undergo this uh, third day, which is an abbreviated trauma uh, workshop. In addition to uh, your uh, uh, acquisition of skill under supervision uh, in your center, uh, I would strongly recommend that look, uh, look out for all the different workshops Try to learn these skills in laboratory setting, AO basic, advanced, primary total lip, knee, elizrop. All these workshops are being conducted not only in the country, but outside the country close by. One important forum is the orthocon, of course. During the orthocons, you would find that most of these, uh, these workshops are held. So I would strongly recommend that uh, one way of acquisition of the skills is to attend these workshops. Of course, you have to write to uh, one dissertation or two articles next. Uh, you must uh, be able to get your synopsis approved within the third year of your training next. And articles must be approved for publication six months before the examination. One important thing which I've observed as a, in the disciplinary committee is that there is a habit amongst the uh, residents that they tend to outsource their synopsis and their, uh, their dissertation or the articles. This trend is on the rise. Please do not do this because it has a very strong uh, negative implication. Uh, of course, whenever it comes to our notice, we actually cancel those articles, we cancel those dissertations, and we give you a penalty of six months to a year of a further training. Please resist, please do uh, and desist from outsourcing your uh, research articles. Within the training, CPSP offers you another program, which is the training in Ireland and UHP. These are two uh, programs in which you can go for a two years training, which is counted towards your FCPS uh, training as well. In Ireland, you have the two years program, which is post IMM. In UHP, you have two programs, a junior and a senior program. The junior program is after IMM and a senior program is after fellowship. This is the process which I've just listed. One important thing is that after you have done these trainings abroad in Ireland or Birmingham, you have to come back to Pakistan and you cannot practice in UK for the next two years. Uh, there are certain administrative issues which we have observed during uh, your training program, which includes scholarship, leave, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I would not go into detail of this. Any person who has some issues over there, they can always actually contact us. One important thing that I would like to highlight is please do not interact with any CPSP employee on personal level. 
many uh, frauds have occurred with the uh, with the CPSP employees who have been defrauded many residents of their hard-earned money. And at the end of the day, they have actually been penalized for conducting fraud as well. The assessment of your FCPS is, of course, uh, during your training and at the end of your training, which is a summative assessment. During the training, of course, e-log entries are being now regulated. You cannot uh, make the entries after three months. Uh, quarterly supervisor feedback is also given. And now a quarterly assessment on mini CX and DOPS is being uh, 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 formulated and it is it would become essential in a couple of years or so. Now let's come to the uh, sum, uh, summative assessment, that is the final examination. I've, we have seen um, that the students tend to take a lot of leaves before they're sitting their final examinations. Please do not do this, spend all the three years trying to scan through your knowledge during your training. One important uh, resource is that just before the exam, different cities hold uh, preparatory courses, which are of about a week or two weeks. That is a good resource. Please do attend them. One uh, important thing that we have observed is that, uh, uh, can we go to the last one? That the students tend to gather around in the different hospitals where the examinations are being conducted. They tend to see the uh, patients in different uh, uh, hospitals, considering that they would come in the next day, please resist from it because it, it, you may be helped, but at times it may cause a thought blockage and it may become difficult for you to perform well in your final professional final examination. Yeah. Now, this is important that uh, now the CPSP is starting two fellowship programs. These are two years fellowship program, which you can uh, do uh, FCPS in pediatric orthopedics arthroplasty, spine and hand. And we think that uh, this program would start in 2022. I've given my uh, email address here. I'm ready to answer many questions. If there are any other questions left, I invite all the residents, they can approach directly me or the Faculty of Orthopedics for any queries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hafiz. And thank you for sharing your email as well with our participants. They can also share their questions. There were so many questions are there and they can share it also with us. And uh, coming to the last uh, presentation in this uh, session uh, about the opportunities in Pakistan, our Dean, Dr. Adil uh, Haider, of course, my Dean as well, uh, as I did my residency, as well as my master program in epidemiology and biostatistics from Al Khan University as well. And this topic with maintaining an intensely academic uh, interest and maybe you show us the way how to become a dean. Dr. Adil, uh, screen with you. Hello and assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa uh, thank you so much for uh, that uh, warm introduction, uh, Dr. Abada. And yes, it has been a pleasure to be your dean. Uh, Dr. Masood Umar, congratulations on organizing yet, an, uh, uh, yet another fantastic course. Uh, I have seen uh, the hundreds of colleagues who have joined, and you should be very proud about organizing yet another major contribution to your beloved field of orthopedics. I've known you for more than three decades now. You've always loved bones more than anything else. I'm uh, pleased to share the uh, uh, opportunity with uh, uh, General um, Suhail Hafiz from the CPSP and of course, Dr. Ghulam Mustafa, the president of uh, Pakistan Orthopedic Association. It means a lot that you are taking time out on a Saturday evening to help our residents and medical students and junior faculty members. I also saw our CEO and so many other colleagues who are gonna be joining us today. Most importantly, this talk is for the residents and those great medical students, especially if you're a medical student, give yourself a round of applause. It's a big deal uh, that you are here. Uh, I, I, I wanna basically say, uh, talk about more than being a dean, I wanna talk about finding a job that you love. Because honestly speaking, uh, we love it, then you really never have to work for, any, for the rest of your life. Because every time you come to work, you love it, so it doesn't ever feel like you're coming to work. Now, uh, you heard from uh, my good friend, our CEO, and he gave a few tips. And I'm gonna also give a few tips based on my uh, uh, personal experiences. And they're gonna be basically three lessons in what I'm gonna talk about. The first thing is, okay, I want you to all believe and know that the fact that you're here on a Saturday night, the fact that you care so much about your career means you want to make a difference. 
वो था ना किसी ने कहा था कि आई वॉन्ट मेक अ डेंट इन द यूनिवर्स सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रियली मेक अ डेंट मेक अ डिफरेंस then the key there is to find your passion what is the thing that really really keeps you up at night kaun si aisi cheez hai that you know we worry about money and so on what is something that is you value even more than money right in my personal case i remember jab mera aa khan mein interview hua tha so i graduated from aa khan i talked about inequality okay this really bothered me inequality mera naam bhi adil ittefaq hai and uh, then i got the opportunity to train as a surgeon and then mere surgery jab khatam ki training i, I was training in the united states to us waqt mujhe khayal aaya ki i'm going to go work in africa or some other lower middle income country low income country okay jab main 5 6 hafte kaam kiya na africa mein to mujhe kisi ne america se bola main us waqt baltimore mein kaam karta tha they said you know you don't need to go to a, a country a poor country you can just take care of poor people right here in baltimore and in fact my entire career then got devoted to solving inequality in healthcare to improving access to healthcare and i realized ki mai jitne bhi papers likhta tha jo bhi mai kaam karta tha wo sare usi ke upar bane hue the in fact bahut saal pehle now about 20 years ago uh you know we showed ke in in the united states uh black americans have a much higher mortality after getting injured than white americans and when we showed this kind of racial disparity you know it became a really big deal the, some things people could understand ki ji cancer care mein is most mein koi disparity hogi because lack of access hoga but emergency mein to lagta tha ki sabko ek saath khayal karte hain so how is it possible that you would have this inequality now that became something that i really got involved in and almost every single paper and you know i've written now more than 300 350 publications the vast majority of them are about understanding where these things come from why they occur now when we showed this these differences you know uh, i got a little bit of notoriety kisne koi medal bhi diye kisne a lot of uh, uh, i got a bigger job mai hopkins mein tha udhar se harvard mein job mil gayi the key that i found was is that you know because i was doing something that i was very passionate about uh, i could only take it to one level which was mai surgeon tha kuch kuch research kar sakta tha bahut zabardast research nahi kar sakta tha so therefore i started to learn about doing more research learn about doing more complicated research qualitative analysis more quantitative analysis i started working with people who taught me a lot so the second thing was ke after you get your passion the second most important thing is mastering your trade ke you must become very 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 exceptionally good and so every day you go to work it just becomes second knowledge so then when i when i started writing uh, better grants bahut sare paise milne shuru ho gaye research karne ke liye aur cheezein shuru ho gayi i realized ki ye aage kaam badh nahi sakta jab tak there is a group of people with me which i like to call a caravan of people so the third thing is you must have a caravan of people with you who are going to help you achieve your goal मैं भी देखता हूँ इन आर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ऑर्थोपीडिक्स और आ खान डॉक्टर मसूद के साथ बहुत सारे उनके साथी हैं जो वो ही वांट्स टू डू सब स्पेशलिटी वर्क ही वांट्स टू अदर थिंग्स ही हैज अ ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल हु आर गोइंग टू मेक हिम सक्सेसफुल अभी आपने पाकिस्तान ऑर्थोपीडिक्स एसोसिएशन के बारे में सुना आपने सी के बारे में सुना दीज आर द ग्रुप्स ऑफ पीपल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बी एन ऑर्थोपीडिक सर्जन यू मस्ट बी विद द पाकिस्तान ऑर्थोपीडिक एसोसिएशन यू मस्ट बी विद ग्रुप्स ऑफ पीपल हु आर गोइंग टू हेल्प यू मूव फॉरवर्ड सो आई एम नॉट स्पेंड अ लॉट मोर टाइम uh except to say that you know in life we can really make a difference and i know those of you who are listening today especially those who go in orthopedics it's a very very difficult specialty you are not there to just stand in line and do what everybody else does inshallah all of you have the ability to be outstanding and make a difference and the key is finding something that you really love to do and then doing it every day and i'm going to repeat those three same things again first is if you can find your passion right and just so you know there are a lot of good ted talks uh, other online material books that can help you figure out what really inspires you so take some time to learn those things what really matters to you i see dr abeda it's amazing to see him back in larkana doing this incredible work i mean that's the kind of thing that we are, you know you want to have a job where people look at you and they like smile and say yaar ye bada zabardast kaam kar right and you can do it so first you have to have your passion second you have to be excellent at what you do and third you must and we must find the caravan of people 
And in closing, I'm going to make a comment and with all, uh, I hope it's okay, Dr. Masood, I just noticed that this panel here, unfortunately has all men. I know Masood is gonna look at me and he's, he's gonna note that I'm gonna say that. And I make this comment because I just saw somebody in the chat and, and that person's name was, uh, I guess, Dr. Aisha. You know, uh, we really need to ensure that we, whenever we do these kind of groups, we, we make sure that we focus and show that there's good gender balance. I'm thrilled to see so many women uh, who are there today, who are part of this. And I understand, I'm sure Masood's gonna make sure that we always have women here uh, in the future, but I just am thrilled to see all the female colleagues who are here and I'm grateful for your presence. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Adam. And by this, we conclude the session on Pakistan. I will, I will start with where Dr. Adam ended with the comments. And also we received some comments. There are some uh, surgeons as well as there are uh, from anesthesia, Dr. Rubaina. Hi, Dr. Rubaina. She's one of our teachers as well. One of the comments was about, like, we need to think of, uh, question was how to attract more females. That's another specialty. But more female residents in orthopedics. We need to think uh, at that. We, we started having some female residents in Al Khan University as well. This is as, as a comment. I will leave it also for uh, everybody else. Among the very uh, common uh, things, maybe I received it at least like 25 to seven, uh, 27 times. I'll just make it in short. It's about the stipend for the CPSP. Uh, oh, sorry, the stipend that we are giving for the fellows because also it's a full-time job. And we need to start maybe uh, like thinking of other ways of attracting more uh, funds. I'm sure when, the, when, when we have funds, we'll pay more, but we need to figure out some other ways, maybe uh, making the hospitals also, or the, uh, the decision makers uh, as well work, work on this thing. And uh, one of the things we all agree on the need for orthopedic surgeons in our community in Pakistan and in different specialties as well. So do you think this is the time that we should start thinking on the MS program trainees as well that we have in different institutes, not just focusing on the FCPS? These were just like comments on the session from Pakistan that I had to say. And among the questions I will ask from uh, each uh, presenter, starting with Dr. Ulam Mustafa, uh, if you can tell us one to three things uh, you wish you knew before, or maybe uh, something you would advise uh, your 35 year old self. Dr. Ghulam. Can you please repeat the question? My question is of two parts, almost the same. Three things, one to three things that you wish you knew before, or some advice you would like to advise your 35 year old self. If I am 35, then what will be advice? Uh, do you want to ask this one? Yes, yes, sir. As, as most of our audience, they are at that, let's say, age, age group, and they are starting their career now. Age, age itself is not a criteria. If one has got a, a want to do, he can do. Mother, just like one of our senior colleagues said, in, at the age of 50, he, did, uh, he started doing his MBA mother, mother, program. So you can do it, mother. Age is not, not a problem, mother. And uh, one of our senior colleague did is in, in a fellowship in Arthro, uh, I think in bone regeneration at the age of, I think probably more, he was more than 50 years of age and he was from Peshawar attending classes in Hyderabad, mother. Dr. Yes, Shweb. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's nice. Which, which factors uh, you, we should consider before choosing a subspecialty? His patience, mother, what he wants to do, mother. He is interested, what is his patience, mother, his interest, this is the most important. Uh, whether he can spare time for that specialty, that is the most important thing, mother. Okay, I'll, I'll move to Dr. Shahid Shafi. The same, yes. I'll give you the same questions if you can just give us some advices for those who just started their career and three things you wish you knew before, maybe. Yes, it's. Um... I, I don't. I don't think I can uh, give you three things that I wish I knew. I was very. I was very fortunate that I was a, always able to pursue my passion. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, as I grew older, uh, my passion evolved. I guess one thing that I learned as I grew older that I didn't know as a younger person uh, was that uh, your interests will change over time. So some of the choices that you're going to be making as a younger person, for example, you know, choosing a specialty or a subspecialty, it is great and you will enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy it for a long time. But once uh, you will master it, you will uh, find that there are other things that also interest you. And uh, it doesn't mean that there is anything wrong with you. It just means that you are evolving and growing. There is a saying that uh, once you climb a mountain, uh, you will find that there is another mountain on the other side to climb. And the choice is yours. You can stay on the first mountain, your first career, uh, or you can uh, take on the challenge uh, to climb the next mountain and have a second career and a third career. So it just depends on uh, what you want to do. So my, my advice to get your, you all and my younger self would be uh, never ever be afraid to pursue your passion, uh, but give it, give it your all. Thank you, thank you. Dr. General Suhail Hafiz, the same question. Which okay. advice you would uh, like to us as, as the new uh, entry, entry in the career? I, I think uh, um, one important thing that all the residents must understand is that they must know the system in which they are entering. So knowing the curriculum, knowing all the way up to the final examination is very, very important. And they must not remain oblivious of the fact that whatever is happening in the CPSP or whatever uh, training program they are going into. They must tap all the resources, including their supervisor and the uh, faculty of orthopedics, number one. Number two, in addition to Pakistan Orthopedic Association, there are many other fellowship programs available in the country and outside the country, even uh, before and after their fellowship. For example, Pakistan Arthroplasty Society is offering a one-year fellowship program. Gurki Trust Hospital Lahore is offering six months to a year program. So I would strongly recommend that the uh, gentlemen who have, uh, and ladies, of course, who have done their fellowship in orthopedics must pick up a subspeciality and go for a fellowship program. And number three, of course, they must also understand an exposure to outside the world is very, very important. Once they have done their fellowship uh, in, from Pakistan or they have done their second fellowship, as I uh, highlighted, we are having four fellowships starting in 2022, which uh, would be an FCPS uh, uh, arthroplasty, spine, hand, or uh, uh, pediatric orthopedics. They must ensure that they uh, pay a visit to an international center for six months to a year, which will open their minds much uh, their horizon would be much wider than what they have now. Uh, and that's all. Uh, I, would, I would again reiterate that if the residents, most of them, if they are fellows, fellows of uh, college, they're most welcome to write to me directly and I'll be there to answer their queries. There was a question persistently coming up uh, regarding the MS students. Uh, the fellowship programs which are uh, being offered by Pakistan Orthopedic Association and by other uh, programs like Gurki Trust, Pakistan Orthoplasty Society, they do not discriminate between FCPS and MS. So these on-job trainings, that is the fellowship program without examinations, are open to MS uh, fellows as well. That's, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I encourage them, even the MS students, to be more maybe active in contacting our supervisors as well in the uh, fellowship programs, as you mentioned. And maybe they can gather some data to know also how many of these fellows they were holding the MS uh, degrees and how many of them they were holders of the uh, FCPS uh, degree. Dr. Adel, uh, the same, same questions, maybe something you would advise us as we are in the 35 year old. You are also belong to our generation, but <laughs> what would you advise yourself uh, if you are 35 years old? Well, first of all, don't be fooled by the caracola, okay? Uh, look, I, I uh, wanna just uh, say that you, we heard some great pearls of wisdoms from colleagues, especially if you're training in a program, knowing what that program is all about and how to navigate that program to General Sabnaka, very, very important points. I think, um, you know, if I had to go back and uh, uh, do, uh, and I was 35, I would do three things different. The first thing is, 
I would give more people the benefit of the doubt. Yani ke, we have a lot of people and you do things and you sometimes assume or sometimes you feel somebody did something and you take it and that sometimes impacts your decision making or the kind of work you do. Uh, a lot of times people make a decision and you, you, it wasn't because of you. They made it because of some other reason, but we think it's because of us. So I would give my colleagues, my work colleagues, more benefit of, of the doubt. And I would be more, uh, you know, I would be much more understanding. I wouldn't be so hot all the time. The second thing I would do uh, is that I would care about making uh, resources for my family. I would care about making enough money so I, my kids can go to school and all those things. But I would pay more attention. Honestly, I would pay more attention on the kind of research, the kind of projects that were much more aligned to my work. Now, as I mentioned, most of my stuff, my research work has been on inequality and I'm so grateful that Alamiya has created the opportunity for me to now be back in Pakistan and work on it from a different angle as a head of a medical college uh, and a surgeon. But there were many other things that I took on. And although I learned ex and got good experience from those things, I'd be more careful in what I chose because what I did choose in many instances, uh, you know, took away time. And the third thing is, and I neglected to say this before when I was talking about the caravan, is that the best people who get you going in your caravan actually are your family members. And I think uh, involving your family, I mean, you know, we have busy jobs, we're surgeons, we are going to do things, but involving them and including them in what we're doing. You know, sometimes you can't be there till 8 p.m. But if you talk to them about what you're doing and involve them, they at least know why you aren't there. And I think it really changes the dynamic and relationship. So those are three things I would have done differently if I was 35. I know they're very personal. Yeah. And I think a lot of people said yeah, other things. Yeah, no, they are. They, they, are, they are. they are very important with all. I, I would like just to thank all of uh, our participants. Uh, and now we will, we will go to the next session, Opportunities in, in the USA. And uh, our speaker, I think, Dr. Safdar Khan is, is available. He, will, he is a spine surgeon and he will tell us about the opportunities in spine surgery in, in the USA. Dr. Safdar. <laughs>